Hello and welcome. While I was working on my Moon Patrol game, I ran into a bug. A bug that was so earth-shattering, it has been kept secret. It has been kept hidden from you. Until now, when we will blow the lid off of the whole thing. How many hints will you need to solve the mystery of the recalcitrant VDG? I'm going to take you through the steps that I went through to figure this out, hint by hint. And if you do not get it by the end, you might find the little explainer afterward useful as it goes over an assembly language concept that you may not be familiar with. And then at the very end, I will talk about how I fixed it. So the first hint is just to watch the symptom. And that's the symptom. Nothing seems to be happening, or maybe all sorts of terrible things seem to be happening. But it should have at least switched display modes. I should have at least seen it go to the graphics screen at some point early. And it did not do that. The next hint is to look at the code. So the main loop starts here, and it doesn't take long before I go set display mode. And if we take a look at set display mode, I didn't touch this. I didn't make any changes to this. It was working fine a second ago, but now it's not. And the next hint is I'll just tell you, this is correct. I really didn't change this code. There's nothing wrong with this code. This really should bring me to P mode three one screen one zero. So the next thing I did is I just set a breakpoint to see, am I really hitting this or did somehow something get screwed up beforehand? And I am hitting this. I am hitting this. And it does go through this code. But it never switches the mode. So it's at this point that I decided this, whatever the answer is, is going to be my new favorite bug because Flawless code is provably getting executed and not doing what it's supposed to do. I knew that once I found the answer, it would be an aha moment. It would be amazing. It would be so cool. Because how this is impossible. Anything that is impossible, but is actually possible, that's the best puzzle of all. The next hint is what was the feature that I was working on at the time? And it was adding stack blasting and self-modifying code to the game. Does this help you know? It did not help me know. And as part of this hint, I'll just tell you that I didn't quite remember what the change was that I made between it working fine and showing the P mode three one screen and suddenly not switching to graphics at all. I don't know what it was. I thought that what I was doing was something innocuous and safe. In fact, not just safe, I thought I was adding safety. I thought I was protecting myself. I thought I was preventing some weird stuff from happening by adding code that was advisable. But you know how it is. You make so many changes and you run, you make changes and you run, and then suddenly it doesn't work and you're like, wait, what was the last thing I did? What was the last thing I did? I think I was just trying to make a bit. What, 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 what was it? What, what did I do? Or maybe you make so many changes at once, you don't know which is responsible and you don't remember all the things that you did. And this brings me to the next hint. Set the breakpoint again and step through the code. So we're at my breakpoint, it's in that main loop and I'm about to call set display mode. And here I am and you can see I'm about to store my A into all the right places to talk to the SAM and then to the mode and it should be fine but the bug is now in front of your eyes. The source code is fine, but the bug is in front of your eyes. You've got everything you need to see it. And right now I suspect that 
My viewers are split between those who see the bug and those who maybe need a refresher on what the DP register is all about. So rather than looking at the source code, let's look at the assembled bytecode. Notice how FFCC is abbreviated to just CC. Notice how FFCA plus one is abbreviated to just CB. What happened to the FF? Well, I'll show you what I did, and then we'll talk about what's going on with the DP register. So in my piddly brain, I was thinking, I'm using the DP register as part of my stack blasting. So it is going to be trashed and it will be unreliable and I better not depend on it. So this is my hint to the assembler. You know what? Just assume the DP register always has FF in it because I'm never going to be reading or writing from anything beginning with FF. Why that's ROM. And I had simply forgotten about the fact that, well, it's not exactly ROM. Some hardware registers begin with FF and I sure as heck am writing to those. So let's do a recap on what the DP register is all about and then we'll talk about how to fix this. Many CPUs before the 6809 made a deal with their developers. They said, hey look, I know you need to access a bunch of 16-bit addresses for loads and stores. So whenever you want to access an address where the upper byte is all zero, I'll let you use a shortcut form of the load and store instructions, which take up one less byte and go faster. But as soon as the address you care about has a non-zero upper byte, you're going to have to pay the full price of using the regular versions of load and store, which require two bytes to specify that address. The 6809 made a better deal. It said, I'm not going to be all my way is the only way like those earlier CPUs. You get to pick which page of addresses is important to you at any given point. You can then use shortcut forms of the load and store instructions, which take up one less byte and go faster. But rather than assume the upper byte is zero, I'll just look in the DP register. Make sure you have DP initialized properly and you're good. And if that's all too much work for you, you can still use the full versions of load and store instructions, which specify the full two bytes of the address you care about, and I'll ignore the DP register. So that just leaves one question. When the assembler sees something like this, how does it decide whether to generate the short form instruction, the direct page version of the instruction, or the long form, the extended addressing form of the instruction? And the answer is, if the DP register has FF in it, then why not just do the short form instruction? So it will look at this address, and if it matches what's in the DP register, it will do the short form. Otherwise, it's forced to do extended addressing. But that just opens up another question. How on earth can the assembler know what's in the DP register? In fact, it is unknowable. You cannot look at the code of a program and know exactly what it's going to do. It could be dependent upon user input, what's sitting on a floppy disk. It could be dependent on the timer, how many times the random number generator has been run before the code runs. All sorts of branches could go to this code from all different places and the DP register could be filled with all sorts of different things. It's impossible to know. And that's what brings us to set DP. This is not an instruction. This is not an opcode. The CPU does not know anything about this. This is just the programmer talking directly to the assembler. This is a hint saying, trust me, I know what I'm doing. And at this point, the DP register has FF in it. And the programmer can put this anywhere in the code with any value here. It's merely a hint and a promise to the assembler of what's going on in the DP register. The assembler then uses this in conjunction with whatever address you're trying to access, and that helps it to decide whether or not to use the short form direct page addressing mode. So just to repeat what my bug was, I did this forgetting that I actually was going to be using addresses beginning with FF. I forgot that I would be talking to the VDG, which requires that I have FF CC, FFCA, FF, all those other thingies. And I made this quote unquote promise 
without fulfilling it. I did not ensure the DP register would have FF in it. In fact, I was assured that the DP would have garbage in it because I was using the DP register as part of my stack blasting. So one way to fix this is to just fulfill my promise. If I simply add these two lines at the top of my code, that will ensure that the DP register really is filled with FF. And later when I use it with stack blasting, I'm already restoring it to what it was before. So setting it to FF at the beginning means it will have FF in it later, so long as I'm not in the middle of stack blasting. You might be wondering why am I doing this roundabout way of putting FF into the A register and then transferring A into DP. Why not just load it directly into DP? And the answer is there is no such instruction, deal with it. I guess the idea was it would be such a rare thing to populate the DP register that forcing the programmer to do a couple instructions is no big deal. And then that allowed the 6809 designers to make some other nice optimal choices on the 6809. So let's run this. And there we go, we switched to the mode and now my game is doing its thing. There is another way to fix this, which is not to do this at all. So I'm not gonna populate my DP register with FF. I'm gonna keep this here just to be mischievous. And instead I'm gonna change this code here. You can prefix an address with either the less than sign or the greater than sign. This is with the LWASM assembler. Less than sign means force the assembler to do the direct page addressing mode. I definitely don't want that. The greater than sign means force the assembler to use extended addressing. So if I do this, even though I'm promising the direct page register already has FF in it, it will be forced to ignore that and will instead use extended page addressing everywhere. Whereas before we were definitely using 8-bit addressing, we were using direct page because you can see that 97, the, the bytecode for store A, precedes a single byte, CC. So CC, CB, CB, C8, I'm sorry, C9 rather, C9. We were using a single byte. Now when we look, we'll see that the full 16 bits are used. So the FFCC is forced to be the full 16 bit address, FFCB, FFC9. And you'll see the opcode byte code is different as well, because as far as the 6809 is concerned, direct page addressing versus extended page addressing is basically a different instruction. But will it run? Hmm, it, it ran, but something new is happening. What is this? Oh, goodness gracious. What could this be? <laughs> I actually, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know what this is. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that's not good. So as you can probably guess, this was not the only code that would be using addresses beginning with FF. So if I'm going to continue with this ruse of promising LWASM that my DP register contains FF, and then using addresses beginning with FF, I had better put that greater than sign after all of them. So I'm going to do that. This is probably not as good as my original fix where I just made sure the DP had FF in it to begin with. Because at least with that fix, I was able to take advantage of direct page addressing some of the time. 
which is more optimal than never doing direct page addressing. But still, I feel like I gotta do this. I gotta see this through. And I think we're back to the beginning. Yes, okay. So let's do that. And this is definitely totally going to work now. Okay, that looks a lot better. See, there was nothing to be worried about, folks. I don't know why you were panicking before. I have it all under control. I'm even going to let this run for a while so we can make sure that it doesn't like abruptly abort and bring us back to the basic prompt with that okay. I don't know. I'm sure that had to do with some nonsense that happened as a result of my erroneous ways. Yeah, it's fine. It's going to do this forever. I can feel it. All right. Well, I hope you all enjoyed my little journey through Bugland. Uh, maybe you learned something. I know I learned something. Uh, thanks, as always, for watching.